This presentation is on heteroscedasticity, uh, which can be spelled either with a C or a K. And as you know, the method of least squares, also referred to as the ordinary least squares method, OLS, assumes that the error term in the regression model is homoscedastic, meaning that it has equal variance, or if you like, constant variance across all observations. When that's not the case, though, then we have the problem of heteroscedasticity, which is a problem of unequal variance of the error term. Now, this type of problem is typically encountered, as I note here, in cross-sectional data. The two types of data we typically work with in econometrics are going to be cross-sectional and time series. So that in the case of cross-sectional data, where the data are collected by observing the outcomes at the same point in time, we have examples of, for example, operating income of firms um, regressed against their advertising expenses, or the consumption expenditure of households compared against or regressed against their household income at a particular time period. So in such cases, the variability that would be associated in their independent in their dependent variable with respect to their independent variable would um, cause heteroscedasticity to be a problem. So I give you a scenario right here. I said consider a cross-section regression of consumption on household income. And let's say you've taken a sample of uh, households of a given uh, sample size. And homoscedasticity uh, would imply that low income and high, and, uh, high income households are going to have the same spending pattern. In other words, that they're going to have the same residual variance, or error variance, if you like, even though their average level of consumption expenditure is different. As you know, that's going to be a tall order. So I give you a, a tiny bit of, uh, of an instance here. So look at these four households. And starting from household number four, you can see that this is a millionaire household of uh, that make about four million bucks. And in this particular year, they spent $200,000. Household number three uh, is also a millionaire household that made three million bucks. And they spend, uh, spent two million. It's a huge amount. But look at households number uh, numbers uh, one and two. All right, number two. Um, is $150,000 of annual income that spent um, 100,000 and the first one made 60 grand spent 40 grand so as you can see quite clearly these uh, millionaires out here um, they can afford to spend little or they can afford to spend much because they have that spending discretion not quite so with these two guys up here these two households up here their spending is going to be tied uh, very closely to how much money they make, especially this guy at the lowest end. So as you can see, the variability in the consumption pattern, or if you like, in the spending pat pattern of households three and four, is uh, naturally going to be much higher than the variability of in the spending pattern of households one and two. And so I note here, therefore, that to uh, that compared to low-income households, such as households 1 and 2, high-income households not only have a uh, higher average level of consumption, as we can see here, but also greater variability in their consumption choices. And as you can see here as well, all from, from 200,000 to uh, two big ones right there. All right, and, and I and I gave here an example in good humor that uh, the uh, wealthy uh, households could afford to dine at a high-end restaurant just as easily as they could pull up right near a big uh, a McDonald's store and 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 eat uh, and eat a Big Mac. All right, so they have that discretion, and therefore, in a cross-section regression of consumption on income it is likely that residual variance, a.k.a. heteroscedasticity, would be an issue. What are the effects of heteroscedasticity? Well, first, the, um, and actually 
the key thing to note here is that while the estimates, while the estimators B1 and B2 are still going to be unbiased and consistent to important properties, however, they are no longer going to be efficient. Another important property, but this one is not going to be met. Efficiency speaks to the um, estimators having minimum variance. So while the estimators are still linear and unbiased, they are no longer the best linear unbiased estimators or blue as we refer to them. So they're just going to be <laughs> Liu, if you like, which linear unbiased estimators, but the word best is not going to be associated with that uh, description. And I note here that this loss of efficiency is because the standard errors and the confidence uh, intervals are going to become too narrow, which are going to give us a false sense of precision. And as a result, tests of significance based on the t-test for the um, coefficients and the f-test for the entire regression may not be reliable. And this concludes this introduction.